Welcome back everyone to the eCore Academy eLearning platform today. My name is AJ Raj, back with yet another geometry video for you all. Today's lesson topic is all about the triangle mid-segment theorem. This is a bit of a shorter lesson, but it is a bit of an extensive concept that I wanted to isolate and focus on separately as its own lesson. So the triangle mid-segment theorem is something that's not very commonly looked upon in geometry, but of course, as a Richmond course, and Richmond course, um, the Core Academy e-learning platform, we like to dissect these certain topics and um, kind of focus and con concentrate on these topics uh, for the most part, because that's what you're here for mainly, to see these enrichment topics and shine some light on these unknown topics, of course. Uh, but before we jump into today's lesson, please make sure to smash that subscribe button down below, uh, hit the post notification bell to get notified on any of our latest posts, and please make sure to hit a like, hit the like button on this video to show your support. It means a lot to us. As I was saying, the, the whole entire topic and theme of today's lesson is to take a look at the triangle mid-segment theorem on its own, what are some of its properties, what, it's, what is its definition under the laws of geometry, and we're also going to look at some extended practice problems. We're going to be putting them into use. Uh, some real life applications I'll be showing you along the way, uh, as it's not very commonly seen, but it is existent, of course. And I will be showing you some of the different types of practice problems you'll be coming across with triangle mid segments and the theorem itself. So, without further ado, let's jump right into it. So, triangle mid segment part, the theorem part one, let's shine some light on the triangle mid segment theorem. So, uh, one major component of the triangle mid-segment theorem has to do with bisectors. That's how the entire theorem is actually um, developed in its, in, in its entirety. Uh, the triangle mid-segment theorem represents uh, proportionality on its own. Uh, it represents a form of proportionality, which I will be showing you um, in one of my later lessons, uh, all about triangle proportionality. This is one of the very um, uh, topics and co concentrations of that. But uh, one major component of the triangle mid-segment theorem would have to be bisectors. So let's look at how bisectors play a role in, tri in the triangle mid-segment theorem, and let's look at exactly what the triangle mid-segment theorem is. So a bisector divides something into two equal parts as a midpoint divides a line segment into two congruent parts. So a bisector, like I said before, uh, as, as you've seen in previous videos, um, bisector is what basically splits any object given into two equivalent parts. In this case, with the triangle mid-segment theorem, we're going to be strictly focusing on our line segments or our side lengths of our triangle. So the bisector will divide it into two equivalent parts after identifying that midpoint of your uh, line segment, because when looking at the midpoint, the midpoint is halfway between both endpoints of your side length or your line segment, one of your sides of your triangle. And if you know the midpoint, you basically draw your straight line segment that basically splits that given line segment into two equivalent parts or two congruent parts. And of course, your bisector would be that very line. And your bisector can come in forms of rays, line segments, or even lines. So let's look at the mid-segment of a triangle, what exactly the mid-segment of a triangle is, and how exactly we can formulate our mid-segment theorem afterwards. So the mid-segment of a triangle is the line segment that connects the midpoints of two of the sides. So if you're looking at a diagram, as I'm showing you here, um, we, there are three possible mid-segments for a triangle, so I'll write this down here three mid-segments for every triangle, and that's because of the fact that there are three sides of a triangle. Three, three mid-segments for any triangle. And when you take a look at, the, at this diagram, I really like this diagram because it shows you the similarities between um, the mid-segments, what they actually create in overall bird's eye view, and how they correlate to the actual triangle. So if you look at this line segment, line AB, I'll trace this over in yellow, line AB, circling it in yellow. So this line AB would be considered the one of the mid-segments of this triangle. These three lines, AC, CB, and AB are the three mid-segments of this triangle, X, Y, Z. But if you're looking at this on a specific proportional um, ratio here, line AB would be the mid-segment of line YZ. So um, there's some specific properties that come with um, mid-segments in relation to their corresponding side length, and I will show you that in the mid-segment theorem. It, it comes with um, the mid-segment theorem. But if you can look, if you see here, YZ um, is basically in some relation, it's going to be parallel to line, side, a, side AB, um, this line AB, mid-segment AB, and it's also intersecting lines YX, side lengths YX and XZ, which are these two side lengths here. 
and it's intersecting them exactly halfway. So it's intersecting it at their midpoints. And as you can see here, we have these congruent um, congruence postulates here showing that these two sides are congruent. Likewise, the other side length as well, as these two are also congruent. All right, now let's move into the uh, mid-segment theorem itself. So let's look at the mid-segment theorem and some of its major properties before we actually jump into problem um, problemated uh, slides. Because it's one thing to actually look at theorems and look at their um, origins, where they derive from, because it's always important to go that extra step. But it's also important to actually apply them. That's where you're actually going to be utilizing them. And that's where it's going to be known to us. So the mid-segment theorem, let's get right into it. So the triangle mid-segment theorem states that the mid-segment of a triangle is parallel to the third side and its length is one half the length of the third side. So let's take a look at this diagram again. I just blew it up a bit because I want to show you exactly what I'm saying here. So the triangle mid-segment theorem states that the mid-segment of a triangle, um, any mid-segment for a specific side, remember each side has its own mid-segment, is going to be parallel to the third side. So if you're trying to discover the mid-segment, uh, you can either refer to this as, uh, let's say, line AB. I like to refer to line AB as the mid-segment of YC in this triangle, but it technically is going to be the mid-segment of XY and XZ, these side lengths here. So if you're looking at these side lengths, XY and XZ, uh, what line would actually split these two um, uh, side lengths into half, uh, directly intersecting their midpoints of both? And what, how would it be parallel to the third side? So if you're looking at X, Y, and X, Z, they both are being intersected by um, A, B, and at their midpoint as shown. So that's one criteria. And the second criteria that it must be followed is the third side, which is Y, Z, the side that's not being intersected at all, must be parallel to side A, B. And as you can see, it is parallel to uh, Y, Z just by looking at eyeballing it. So Y, Z must be parallel to A, B. And also a very neat thing about that is that line AB, since it's parallel to YZ, and since YZ is considered the third side of that mid-segment, uh, line AB must be one half of YZ. So I'll just write this here. So AB must be parallel to YZ as the mid-segment, so that's parallel. And then AB is also equivalent to one half of YZ. So it's one half the length of YZ. It's one half the length of what it's parallel to. So all these mid-segments that are parallel to side lengths, like AC is parallel to XZ. That would be one half of XZ. Um, AB is one half of YZ. And of course, your last mid-segment CB is going to be one half of XY. So that relationship is going to be consistent all throughout. And if you haven't already guessed, that's going to be one of the major topics that we're going to be looking at for our problems. These are going to be revolved around our problems. So without further ado, let's jump right into our problems and get this lesson uh, knocked out because I don't want to spend too much time on this and confuse you all because the later lessons that I will be coming across, I will kind of mention these concepts. So it's important that you at least get some, uh, get uh, acquainted with this theorem. But then again, it's not going to be a, as commonly used throughout geometry. So let's look at practice part one. Let's start off with our first type of problem and it's going to be some form of utilizing the mid-segment theorem. And in this problem, we're going to be looking at proportional, pr proportional relationships. So we're going to utilize the mid-segment theorem to discover um, what is the length of BD if GF is 12.5. And 12.5, since I did not give you a unit of measure, um, you're going to refer to that as a unit. So I'm going to write here units. Units. So if we know that the length of BD is, uh, sorry, if we know the length of GF, which is 12.5, right here, uh, it says mid-segment right here. I'll circle it. So it's 12.5 units. If we know that GF is 12.5 units, and we want to figure out the length of BD, which is this line right here, how are we going to calculate that? So of course, we're going to utilize the mid-segment theorem, if I, as I've already given that away in the title. So if we look at 12.5 units and we look at BD, we're going to try and formulate some sort of proportion, proportional relationship. Um, and of course, that's stated in the mid-segment theorem. A mid-segment is mid-segment that is parallel to its third side of a triangle is always going to be one half of its length. So we know that GF uh, equals BD. Uh, sorry, equals one half BD. That's how it's given in the actual um, mid-segment theorem. So GF equals one half of BD because the um, the Mid-segment will be, always be one half of the uh, 
uh, given side length. So one half VD, but that can also be rewritten. Um, if you're gonna multiply each side by two, you can get that two GF or two times the mid-segment equals um, BD. And if we're utilizing this equation as I formulated here, we know that 12.5 units is equivalent to GF. So I'll write this here, GF equals 12.5. So we can just plug in 12.5 for GF to get that two times 12.5. Two times 12.5 equals BD. And we know that two times 12.5 is equivalent to 25. So that means that BD, the side length, the third side length of our triangle, is going to be equivalent to 25 units. So that's the length of BD. That's our answer. All right, let's move on to our second type of problem, our practice part two. And it's just going to be more practice with the mid-segment theorem, but I'm going to be utilizing a different component of the mid-segment theorem. And this is going to have to relate to um, slope. So what is the slope of CD in this triangle, same triangle, if GE has a slope of negative two? So if we look at this diagram here, uh, we, we are given the uh, line segment GE and the slope of GE. So line segment GE is, of course, one of the mid segments of this triangle, CBD, and it has a slope of negative two. So I'll write that here. Uh, GE equals uh, M of negative two, M representing the slope. So it has a slope of negative two, and we're given the task of discovering what the slope of CD is the third side length of this triangle, meaning that it um, it has some sort of correlation with this given mid-segment. So CD is right here. Apologize for that. Make this a little bit neater. So that is CD, and this is GE. And what we're given the task with is to develop uh, a consensus after looking at GE, our mid-segment, uh, trying to develop the consensus of what CD's slope is. Now we know that the triangle mid-segment theorem states that any side, um, any uh, third side of a mid-segment, meaning the side that's not being intersected by a mid-segment, uh, must be parallel. So the mid-segment must be parallel to the third side. And we know that if two line segments are parallel, that means they have equivalent slope. So parallel, I'll write this here, equals um, equal slope. So if we look at negative two, we know that GE is one of the mid segments and it's, it's going to have to be parallel to CD since that's the third side of the triangle. So we know that the slope of CD must also be negative two. So CD equals an M of negative two or a slope of negative two. Very simple. And finally, I wanted to show you a little bit of a cool um, discovery that I've made here. Uh, not, of course, not by myself, but I've done some research about it. And I was confused why people don't actually um, include this because it's actually more than, more than, um, you know, theoretically uh, enhancing. Uh, it's very realistically and basically looking at it logically, very interesting to look at. So this is gonna be a bit of a similarity uh, situation that I'm gonna show you uh, when it comes to mid-segments of a triangle, specifically a triangle. So I'm gonna be deciding what is, we're gonna, the problem that we're faced with is to discover what is the scale factor from GEF to CBD if GE is four units. Now, we know that uh, if you have, um, we know that we have three sides of a triangle and we know that each side can be represented with its own parallel mid-segment. So if you're going to have three parallel mid-segments to three sides of a triangle, that means you're going to have three mid-segments. And those mid-segments are going to uh, intersect at common points, common midpoints on each of the sides. And when they do so, they're actually going to form a triangle, a new triangle. But this triangle in, in general is going to be a similar figure to the entire triangle. So this triangle is going to be similar to this triangle this big triangle. So that's basically saying CBD is going to be similar to um, GEF, which is the mid segments creating the triangle and the side lengths creating the triangle. So they're gonna be similar, meaning they have the same angle measure and they have proportional side lengths. Uh, now we know that um, if each side of a triangle, uh, each side of this mid segment triangle, this little triangle inside here, we know that each side is going to be a mid-segment and we know that the mid-segment is going to be one half um, of its um, 
of its opposite uh, of its third side, since it's parallel to that side, it's also going to be one half. We know that it's only th that the um, uh, we know that the difference between the similar figure on the interior, the mid segment triangle, is going to be uh, in some relation to the larger triangle. Now, since we know that each side length is going to be one half of its um, corresponding side length on the large triangle, meaning the small mid segment triangle is going to be one half each side length on the large triangle, we know that the scale factor must be two. And we can discard the information that I've shown you here. GE is four units. I put that on purpose because it doesn't matter if you know uh, what GE is. I'm asking for the scale factor in the problem. And since we already know that one half of the mid segment, sorry, one half of the side length of the third side will be equivalent to the mid segment, the scale factor is equivalent to two. So let's write that in there. Scale factor equals two. And this is always true. This is always true for any situation. Always true for all situations. And that's specifically for triangles. It's, it's a whole entirely um, different scenario when it comes to um, your quadrilaterals and so on and so forth, because with quadrilaterals, you of course have your diagonals and that's a different situation. It has a bit of similarity with this, uh, but of course, different concepts and different environments. All right, everyone, I hope you all enjoy it. This has been the eCore Academy e-learning platform today. Um, please make sure to like and subscribe down below. And of course, turn on post notifications to get notified on any of our latest uploads. Um, please keep watching these videos. We try our best to give you the um, greatest of experiences. Try and watch these videos all the way through, of course. And of course, thank you for sticking with me if you've already watched up to this point. Uh, please visit our website at www.ecoreacademy.org. There we have full unlocked access to what we offer entirely as an eCore Academy, as, as an e-learning platform. Uh, on our own. So we uh, basically have different perks and added bonuses on our website aside from our YouTube channel and our social media platforms. There we have full unlocked access to integrated quizzes, note sheets, and worksheets that go along with each and every one of our videos that are their own separate lessons organized into courses and course studies. So you can uh, access, access everything in a completely organized environment. And of course, we have other events there as well. We also have all of our contact information. But if you haven't visited our website yet, please email us at ecoreacademy.com if you want to reach out to us, uh, any questions that you have, or if you just want to talk. Uh, finally, please check all of our social media platforms down below at Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Uh, see what kind of content we have that out there. Uh, check us a follow and use our mediums to share our videos. Once again, everyone, I hope you all enjoyed. This has been AJ, and I will see you guys in the next one. Peace.